What's up guys, I'm Rustin from RossMartZek.com and this is another tutorial in Swift programming. Now in this class I'm going to show you guys how to use the while loop, so let's get started. Now what is a while loop? Well a while loop performs a set of statements until a condition becomes false. And in Swift there are two types of while loops, there's the while and there's the do while. And I'll show you how to use both of them in this video, but we're going to start off with the while. And the while evaluates its condition at the start of each pass through the loop. And I'll show you how that works right now. But we're going to first start off by declaring a few variables and we're going to use the VAR keyword because we want our variables to be able to change. We want to be able to change the values of the variables because that's very important. If we use the uh, LET keyword, that's creating constant variables that can't be changed. Once we declare their values, the values cannot be changed. So that's why we're using the VAR keyword because we want the values of our variables to be altered and we want to be able to change them. So now we're going to hit space. We've got to give our variable a name. I'm going to call my first variable red. I want to make it equal to integer value of zero. So now I'm going to declare another variable. We're going to use the VAR keyword. I'm going to call this variable blue and I want to make it equal to integer value of six. Now we have two variables that we declared. The first one is red, second one is blue. They're both integer data types. Now we're going to start the while loop. To start a while loop, we type in the while keyword, W-H-I-L, sorry, W-H-I-L-E, while. Hit space. Now we got to uh, type in open and close curly brace. Now in between the open and close curly brace, we're going to hit enter a few times. Now this is the structure of the while loop here. Now this is the way it works. After the while, before the, this uh, open uh, curly brace, is where we're going to test our conditions. So we're going to type in conditions. As long as those conditions are true, the loop keeps happening. Once the conditions are false, the loop stops. So we're going to give it a condition to test. We're going to say red is less than blue. And hit space. So we're, these are the conditions we're testing. We're testing whether or not red is less than blue. As long as red is less than blue, then the, this while loop is going to keep happening. The loop is going to keep going. Once this is false and red is no longer less than blue, the loop will stop. So now uh, every time the loop happens, it, it's going to do whatever is in between this open and closing curly brace here. So we're going to give it some codes in this, uh, this open and close curly brace. And the first one is going to be a print line code. So we're going to hit tab here. We're going to use the P-R-I-N-T-L-N keyword, open and close parentheses. This is a code for printing something out on the screen. Print line, open and close parentheses. Now in between this open and close parentheses, we're going to type in the variable red. I want to print out the value of red every time the loop happens. So after this here, we're going to increment the variable uh, red by one. So we're going to use this plus plus, then the variable red name. Now we're incrementing because uh, we want uh, the loop to stop eventually. If we don't increment, the loop is going to keep going because the variable red is always going to be less than blue because we declared red with an integer value of, of zero and we gave a blue an integer value of six. If we don't increment the variable red in here, the loop is going to go on forever. So that's why we're incrementing the variable red. Every time the loop happens, the variable red uh, is incremented by one and so it's going to print out the value of red first then it's going to increment the variable red by one. Then it's going to keep going until red is no longer less than blue. So let's test it out. I'm going to hit play here. Build succeeded. And as you can see down here, it printed out zero, one, two, three, four, and five. It printed out six digits. It started with zero because remember, we gave it a value of zero here first. And, uh, and the conditions it was testing is as long as red is uh, less than blue, the loop is going to happen, right? And uh, we started off with the value of zero with red. Uh, in, in the loop, it prints the value of red. So we have, once it printed red first, it had a value of zero first, right? So then it incremented red by one. So now red has a value of one. So once it went back here, it tests the condition. Now red has a value of one. It's still less than blue. So the loop's going to happen. It's going to print the value of red, which has a value of one now. So that, that's why it prints one then it's going to increment. Now red has a value of two and it's going to keep going until red is no longer less than blue. So that's how we use a while loop. Now I'm going to show you the do while loop. Now let's delete all this here. Let's keep our variables here because we're going to use them again. And uh, the, the do while loop is a little bit different. It's the opposite way of the while. And uh, this is how we start a do while loop. We type in do. Do is a keyword, right? Open and close curly brace. In between the open and close curly brace, we're going to hit enter a few times. So first it 
uh, it does whatever is in the open and close curly brace. It doesn't test for conditions first, like a while loop does. It does the code first, then it'll test for conditions. So uh, now we gotta type in while after this closing curly brace here, we're gonna type in while. So now we gotta give it a condition to test. We're gonna say while red is again, less than blue. It's gonna be the same condition. While the red is less than blue. So again, the dual while loop is the opposite way of the while. They bo they're both uh, loops that test for condition, but the, the dual while loop first does the statement, then it'll test for condition over here. So we gotta give it a few statements. Let's start off by printing something out on the screen again. So we're gonna use the print print line keyword. So print ln open and close parentheses. This code again prints whatever you want on the screen. And I wanna print the value of red again. And uh, now we gotta increment it again. If we, again, if we don't increment the value of red, the loop is never gonna stop. So we're gonna increment the value of red by one. So we're gonna use the plus plus in the variable name, which is red. So again, from the top, this is the do while loop. This is the structure of a do while loop. This is the opposite of a while loop. They both uh, are loops that, uh, they are loop uh, based on conditions, right? As long as the conditions are true, the loop will keep going, but they do it the, uh, upside down. The do while loop first does the statements, right? It does whatever is in the statements, then it'll test for the conditions in the bottom. While a while loop uh, first tests for conditions, then it does the statements afterwards. So let's hit play here and see what happens. We're gonna hit play, build succeeded, and it did the same thing. It printed out zero, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, pretty, it's pretty much the same as a while loop, but it does it backwards. Again, we, we'll do whatever is in this, in the, this open and close uh, curly brace. We'll do the statements first, and then we'll test for conditions. And then again, as long as the, the conditions are true, the loop will happen. Once the conditions are no longer true, the loop stops. In this case, once red is no longer less than blue, the loop stops. And that's how we uh, create a do while loop. And that, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rasim from RossmerTech.com, and thanks for watching.